Hello, our learners. Hope you are five. Uh, today we are going to continue with our topic, foreign influence in Africa. When we started, we looked at foreign influence and we said foreign influence were the changes that were brought by our visitors who came from outside the continent of Africa. And we looked at two earlier visitors. We looked at the Arabs as visitors who came from Asia. Asia is a continent. Then we also looked at Europeans followed who came from Europe as a continent. So we gave reasons why Arabs came. For instance, we said Arabs, many of them came to Karao to trade. There are those who came to spread Islam. Then we have got those who were running away from Islamic wars, which are called jihads. Then we also talked of the effects of the Arabs. We looked, we, there were those positive effects and there were those negative effects. For instance, when we talk of Islamic, Islamic religion, which was brought by the Arabs, that was positive. But when we talk of slave trade, that was negative influence. So today, we are going to concentrate on slave trade, which was brought by the Arabs. Why are we talking of the Arabs? Because they were the first foreigners to come to the continent of Africa. So we are looking at slave trade today. But this is not something new, because we looked at slave trade in P6. Now, if the question number one that can arise is what is slave trade? So our number one would be what is slave trade? Now, let's even put it, not is, let's put it was. Because what we had at that time is not what we have today. Today, the slave trade we have is a modern one whereby we go ourselves willingly. But that of long ago, it was forced. Now one can ask you, which slave trade are you talking today? You find that we have got our brothers and sisters who have gone to Asian countries like Saudi Arabia, those who are in the United Arab Emirates, who are made to do a lot of work, but with less pay. They are made to do a lot of work under hard under hard conditions, harsh conditions, and paid less. Because remember, we said slavery is making, possessing somebody and making somebody to work for many hours, a lot of work, but without paying it. That is slavery. So the modern slavery, we go ourselves in the search for jobs, but they make people work a lot under harsh conditions, but you are paid less. So that's why we are looking at the slave trade of long ago. That's why we used was. So slave trade was the buying and selling of human beings. That was slave trade, the buying and selling of human being. Then, then slavery, we are talking from number two. Slavery. So when you talk of slavery, slavery is the possession of a person by another person by another person illegally so you possess somebody you own somebody you make somebody work for many hours without payment or with less Payment. You can also say the owning of a person by another person working without pay. Owning. 
can say slavery is owning another person by another person working for longer hours Without faith, without or with less faith. So imagine that. So you possess somebody, you have heard of these people who go to these Asian countries, they take your passport away, and then you are not allowed at times to communicate with your people. So somebody has possessed you. Somebody has, has bought you and you work under hard conditions but you are paid less. That is modern slavery. So, two terms. Slave trade was the buying and selling of human beings. Slavery is the possession of a person by another person or owning a person by another person working for long hours under hard conditions without or with less pay. So that is about slavery. Now let's look at how were these slaves good in East Africa. So our number three, we are looking at how slaves were good in East Africa. How slaves were obtained. You can use the word how slaves were obtained. So one of the way slaves were obtained was through raiding villages, through raiding. How were these Arabs raiding villages? Raiding villages. Now, the Arabs would come at night, set the village on fire, as these people were running out of their huts for the safety of their lives, they were then captured. And then after capturing, they were put in chains and then made to move. That was raiding villages. Two was through butter trade with the African kings and chiefs. Through butter trade. With the African, with the African kings and chiefs. How was this carried out? So what happened? The African chiefs, the African kings, remember some societies were governed by kings, other societies were governed by chiefs. That's the way they were organized politically. But then, especially find that those who were considered to be wrong people in society would be exchanged with the Arab goods. Others would bring goods like guns. They would bring goods like glass. They would bring things like wine, cigarettes. And then Africans will give away human beings in exchange for this. And that what was called butter trade, which is the exchange of goods for goods or services. So through butter trade with the African kings and chiefs, that's why many African kings and chiefs never want a slave trade to end because for them they were benefiting. It is one of the reasons why slavery took long without any in Africa. Then there was also through slave markets. Through slave markets. Meaning the Af the markets that existed in Africa, in East Africa specifically, or in Africa at that time, we had a market like Zanzibar, which was considered the biggest in the world. We had a market like Tabora, which was an interior slave market. Tab Tabora, which was at times known as Kaze. Then we also had 
in West Africa growing. Now, meaning the African people or the other me, Arabs who acted like middle men would raid villages, get Africans, take them to these markets, and then sell Africans like animals. So Arabs would come, go to the slave markets, and buy these, uh, these Africans as animals. So through slave markets, and I've given examples of the slave markets, we had Zanzibar, which was part of East Africa, Tabora, which was an interior slave market, we had Gore, we had also Bagamoyo. Bagamoyo. This way, slave market. This was in West Africa, and it was the, the largest slave market in West Africa. So, through slave markets. Then, another way was through kidnapping. Through kidnapping lonely travelers. Through kidnapping lonely travelers. So the strong Africans or the Arabs themselves would uh, lay an ambush, capture these Africans, and take them. Those of you who have, um, there is a movie called The Roots. In fact, this point, that movie can explain this point very well. It's called The Roots. It is about slave trade. If one move watched this movie, then you'll be able to see how Africans were being kidnapped by Arabs and taken as slaves. Now, in our number four, we are looking at why Africans were needed. Why were slaves needed? So, why were slaves needed? Why do you think this trade became a very important trade? Who people benefited most? So, one of the reasons why slaves were needed, slaves were needed to work in homes, so to work or to carry, to work as domestic workers. That is, either to work as maids, to work as houseboys, at times they are called shamba boys, slashing, so they were supposed to go and help in Europe and Asian countries because many of the slaves that we got from Africa were mainly sold to European countries and the American countries where they needed people to work in homes. Then also we needed slaves were needed to work in plantations. To work in plantations. To work in plantations. For instance Tea plantations, sugar cane plantations, tobacco plantations. These people were mainly taken to South America to work, to provide that labor, dig, harvest, and weed. So to work in plantations, they were needed because Africans proved to have a lot of energy. So they were made to work in plantation. And then three, they were made or they were needed to work in mines work in mines. These people were needed to work in mines, like uh, gold mines, uh, 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 copper mines, timber, I mean, you can talk of iron mines. So they were supposed to do that work, digging, in order to reach the mineral. Then, the African chiefs and kings also needed this trade continue because they were getting a lot, a lot of European goods. So you can say slaves were needed for butter trade. Needed for butter trade by African traditional leaders. 
vision of leaders. So they also need it. That's why they participated most. They wanted to get free goods. Then let's look at the people who participated. Who are the groups of people who participated in this thing? So let's look at our number five. Groups of people. Groups of people who participated. Who participated in slave trade? We are who are these people who participated in slave trade? Of course, you begin with the Arabs. The Arabs were the first participants of this trade. Then you can also say the African chiefs and kings. So you talk of the Arab traders were the first participants. You talk of the African kings and chiefs, African kings and chiefs were also participants in slave trade, enslaving their fellow Africans. Then you can talk of the Europeans. For instance, you find that the Europeans, the British joined the trade. The French join the trade. So, much as later we see them abolishing it. So, we have the Dutch. Dutch are people from Holland, Netherlands. You talk of the French, people from France. You can talk of the British. You talk of the Portuguese. Then, also, you talk of the Kartumas. These were people who were coming, the Arabs from Sudan. Now, this was mainly raided northern Uganda. These are the people who carried out slave trade in northern Uganda. This were the Arabs who were coming from uh, Sudan. Khartoum is the capital of Sudan. Maybe that's why it was named Khartoum. So, those were the participants. We had the Arabs, we had the African kings and chiefs who needed mainly foreign goods. We had the Europeans who mainly from France. We are talking of people from Spain, we are talking of people from uh, Netherlands. Then we are talking of the Kartumas who are Arabs from uh, Sudan. Those are also people who participate. So these are groups of people who participate. Now let's look at the slave markets. I've already given you the slave markets. We had Zanzibar, which was considered to be the largest slave market in the world. Tabora was an inland slave market in Tanzania. The old name was called Kaze, so if they asked me which slave market in East Africa was also known as Kaze, was Tabora. Then Gore was a slave market in West Africa, Gore Island. Then you talk of Bagamoyo. Bagamoyo later became an area where freed slaves were made to settle. Where freed slaves were made to settle. Now let's look at the effects. The positive and the negative effects of slave trade. What were the positive effects of slave trade? And then we shall also look at the negative ones. Was there anything good? But you find, of course, the majority of the effects were negative. So, positive effects. Positive effects. Of slave trade, positive effects of slave trade. So what we see, the positive ones, we can say on the side of the Africans, the kings and chiefs gain a lot of wealth. So you can say African kings, kings and chiefs gain a lot of wealth. That was positive, but we a few people. Of course, we have said the African kings and chiefs. Then we are saying some kingdoms grew and became powerful. Some kingdoms grew and became very powerful. Let's look at Uganda. Remember, we say. Uganda participated in the long distance trade. 
So Buganda acquired guns earlier than any other kingdom in Uganda. And that's why Buganda was able to attack other kingdoms, gain a lot of power, gain a lot of wealth. So Buganda grew to become a very, very powerful kingdom due to slave trade because they acquired guns. Then some towns grew. So some coastal towns grew. For instance, when you talk of towns like Bagamoyo grew to become powerful because of slave trade. When you talk of towns like Malindi, when you talk of towns like Chilwa, they became very powerful because of slave trade. Then you can also say Islam was introduced. Islamic religion, Islamic religion was introduced. That was positive. Islamic religion was introduced. That was positive. Some of us are Muslims. Then you can also say new crops were introduced. New crops, crops were introduced. For instance, when we talk of cloves in the islands of Zanzibar and Pemba, when we talk of rice in East Africa, new crops were introduced. Also, you can discover that even apart from crops, even we got a new type or new breed of cattle, and those were the zebu cows. So you can say that zebu cattle, the zebu cows, zebu cows were introduced. Zebu cows were introduced. That was positive. Then we say the Kiswahili language and culture were also introduced after the intermarriage of the Arabs and the coastal Bantu. So let's look at the negatives. What were the negatives? Negative effects of slave trade. Slave trade. Negative effects of slave trade. One, there was loss of life. Laws of life. Many people lost their life. Many people were killed. In West Africa, during that time when slave trade was abolished, because the way we had the British ship patrolling the water bodies like the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. So whenever these people would get boats carrying human beings, they would arrest the owners. So in order to avoid being arrested, Africans who were taken as slaves be thrown into the ocean. So that was loss of life. Then there was a lot of human suffering because they were child in chains and they were beaten. So there was a lot of human suffering. People suffered a lot. A lot of human suffering. Then also we said famine was brought because how did the family come in? African, energetic Africans were taken to work in plantation, to work in mines. That means Africa lost its labor. So you can also say Africa lost the labor force. Africa lost its labor force. Africa lost its labor force because our population was taken. Then there was depopulation. Depopulation, our population was reduced. There was depopulation. The population of Africa was reduced as many people were being taken to, as many people were being taken as slaves. And lastly, we are saying it encouraged, it, uh, it, it encouraged, encouraged, inter tribal wars. How did this inter tribal wars? How did this come about? Because each tribe, each kingdom would go and attack another one in order to get people whom they would sell as slaves. So if it encouraged wars between tribes. So this is about same thing. Thank you for being a good audience. So this marks the end of our lesson. We meet in another lesson. Bye for now.